Good morning. It is day day three. Day three on board and we have woken up to a pretty spectacular morning. I can feel the sun on my back. Um, yeah, and, and, and honestly, uh, an absolutely spectacular anchorage. There's the kind of sound of vaguely menacing wildlife screeching in the background and nothing climbed on the boat and tried to beat the me last night so I'm considering that to be a win um so today we are still in the kind of the the hub and the river system associated with Sydney the last few days there's been a real kind of like a lot of swell coming in from a cyclone that's been north so the swell has been pretty intense so over the last few days it's settled down the cyclones moved north today we are going to sail um out of this harbour system into the into the Pacific Ocean and then we're going to sail north and we're going to sail north up the coast into another to another kind of like location so we're looking forward to that I'm um, looking forward to getting the sails up getting this boat moving so let's um, get the sail bag sorted out I want to familiarize myself with the lines and how it all works take it from there So why does that Hallian have like a double, like a loop in it? Why, is, why does it go, uh, why is it just a single line? A lot of catamarans. Mm. In fact, most catamarans, I think, have a two to one purchase system on the main hangar. And why is that? Because it's, uh, you put like, half the amount of work in to raise the sail. Oh, okay. Just to make our lives easier. Yeah. Can you just stop for a sec? That um, white line, is that, can you like, do you tighten that once it gets up to the top so. of the mast? We'll find out. Okay. Are you going to raise, <laughs> you raising it completely? I'm raising it completely. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy with that. Alright. That was fairly easy. Everything does seem to feel a little bit easier on this. Like, not even a little bit easier, like a ton easier on this boat than our previous boat. What are they doing? No, they're just having a feeling frenzy. Like, white leaps out of the water. <laughs> <laughs> there have been sharks in this harbour before. Yeah, I know. A couple of things. Firstly, this boat is pretty bloody easy to use. Like, but I don't think it's just because it's a catamaran. I think there's a lot of things on this boat that just we didn't have when we ordered Ruby Rose. So essentially Ruby Rose is 10 years old now. She's nine and a half years old. And I think that just, just little adv small advances in the whole, you know, in technology have made things pretty easy. Mm. Like. For instance, the master vault systems have evolved a little bit so that you haven't got to kind of like be mindful of plugging into shore power and an inverter at the same time without tripping the systems. You know, the Yanmar engine controls are, you know, they seem pretty simple, you know, and other things like the dinghy, like an electric start, you know, everything so far has been a, a lot more simple. Let's hope that continues. Yeah, let's hope that continues. All right, my love. Uh, All right, well, let's... um. Drop the line and we'll get out of here. All right. Uh, do you want I me want you to, to drop it? You want me to drop well, it? Well, you can do either. You can do, you can steer the boat out of here or you can drop the line. You get to choose which one, but it's happening now without... Without delay. Without delay. So without yeah. any further delay. All right, well, I'll drop the line since I need to film. You ready? And his eyes tell me things his mouth can well, she That was easy. <laughs> me, I feel a thousand different ways. Still, I'd rather act than articulate. I've got cracks on my back and my shoulder in my way. You see, I'm in nature, but I do bad things. 
Well, last night was absolutely delightful. We spent uh, the evening in this beautiful, beautiful little bay, um, just on a mooring buoy, and it was just so lovely. We just slept so well, oh my God. Woke up, just the most peaceful morning. Gorgeous. It's so nice actually to wake up to the sound of nature around you. You know, that doesn't often happen. Um, but there was not a single man-made noise. It was just birds and, you know, fish splashing around, splashing on the surface of the water and, you know, like a very gentle lapping of the water against the hulls. And it was just so peaceful and lovely. You would not think that we are only a few miles away from Sydney. Like we're literally, this is a national park behind me and Ford in front of me is uh, the northern suburbs of Sydney. So like we're right there. And yeah, it's so peaceful. seems fun until you got the weight to deal with in about 10 seconds and shit goes flying. Nah. So we got a bridge lift in uh, 15 minutes. <laughs> it's about a mile away. So when we came through here, if you saw last week's episode, we were like super late for the bridge. I mean, we made it, but only with about five minutes to spare. So this time we're like, we're not doing that again. We're gonna get there nice and early, but of course, us being us, we uh, yeah, like way too early. Otherwise, we, you know, there's no wind. Just do laps, go up and down. The thing that strikes me is that we are in the northern Sydney suburbs right now. We're in a place called Middle Harbour, really close to the CBD, like super close. And there are loads of um, mansions on the hillside. These houses, you know, I don't know if you guys know, some of you will, but well, the cost of houses in Sydney is insane. Insane. Like probably one of the most expensive cities in the world, for sure. These houses here that we're looking at would be worth millions, some of them tens of millions. And, you know, it strikes me that there are lots of boats around here on mooring boys or just at anchor that are not super yachts, they're just little runarounds, you know, modest boats just for normal people. And you can have a little boat and come out and enjoy exactly the same view. <laughs> it's obviously a different experience being on a boat to um, living in a lovely big house. I have the same view, I can see the same outlook right now and if I drop the anchor right here I would have that ex exact same experience as the people who spend millions and millions of dollars on a house and I think that that actually is true of cruising in general because people ask us a lot how much should I spend on a boat to go cruising to live on and go cruising and it's a really hard question to answer because you can go cruising on a little 30 foot even smaller on a hole from the 80s. It might only cost you $20,000 and you'll be in an anchorage, enjoying the same view, watching the same sunset, swimming off into the same water as the people next door who spent $2 million on a big catamaran. So I think that it's not so much the boat itself that gives you the experience, it's, it's a, your attitude, but B, the places that you go and the people that you meet, that's that's the live aboard life, you know, that's that's what gives you, that's what makes it so good. It's not the boat, although the boat can definitely help. And obviously I say this as we um, wait for our new boat to be built. <laughs> and we've been talking about how easy and big and relatively luxurious this boat is compared to Ruby Rose and how Ruby Rose 2 is gonna be kind of even bigger, have even more amenities, be even easier in a lot of ways. So I'm, I am a little bit, I guess, hypocritical when I say, oh, you can just do the same thing on a small boat. But that being said, we did that. We spent six years living on a 38 foot monohull and we crossed oceans and we went to really quite remote areas. And, you know, we, we were the boat that was by far the smallest boat in the anchorage and going over to have sundowners on these catamarans and going back to our little boat that we loved, of course. It was a luxurious boat, but she was quite a modest boat at the same time. No washing machine, no freezer, no freezer barely any storage, manual toilets, 
nothing was easy. There was nothing on that boat that was particularly easy. But she was fantastic. She was at home. We loved her. But you know, times change, and sometimes you get to the point where you wanna, you just want things to be a little bit easier. Sorry, there's construction. Someone's building, you know, onto their multi-million dollar property over there. You know, times change. But I guess my point is that you don't have to spend a lot of money to have an amazing experience on a boat if you want to be a Liverpool cruiser, I guess is the take home message there. Yeah, lots of other boats, there about eight other boats all around and I just hang, hung back to go through last but then I realised I was like a little bit too far back. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm determined now to go outside of my comfort zone and I think that there would have been times where I would have just said to Nick, no, I'd rather you do it. And I think now I need to accept that we're both actually learning how to manoeuvre this catamaran together. So yeah, so with the boat's got gobby props on, which are fantastically beautiful pieces of kit. Um, we came through the bridge and noticed a little bit of vibration through the starboard engine. Nothing to concern me, but enough to kind of like just call the call the uh, the, 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 the owner of the boat. And he said, yeah, look, the, the, the boat had it had been vibrating a little bit beforehand. I mean, luckily with the cat, we've got two engines. But yeah, I know, it's so good. Normally, if you've got something wrapped around the prop, if it's something huge, it was it can actually stop the engine. And we've had that before um, when we ran over a fishing net in Morocco. Yeah, but, in Portugal, we had oh, something that tripped out yeah. like everything. Yeah, didn't we? so there's that. But small things wrapped around the prop, just they ish, there's a vibration because one of the blades could be caught. Now, normally, the best way of doing that is you put the engine into neutral and run it in reverse, and it unwinds itself. And in this case, it did. So the vibration's gone. Um, we'll keep an eye on it, but. I think the other thing with, you know, gorries is that they're feathering props. So, you know, all you need is something, just a little something to kind of stop one of the uh, little blades from opening 100% and um, it will get a vibration because it'll be spinning unevenly. Mm. But this, fine, sorted, we're pretty happy. Sorted, now. easy. Yeah. All right. Onward. Onward. Let's get out the cart and then we can um, set the sails properly. There's always how to keep the school <laughs> I still see a white picket fence and green grass growing Maybe I was drawing in my head You know you're the reason that I live no There's some big rollers out there Forecast said one metre swell It's way bigger than that But that's okay. It actually feels really comfortable. I know if we're, I'm trying to think if we're in Ruby Rose in a sea state with this wind, how would it feel? I think it would still be nice actually because Ruby Rose, she sailed really well in light winds actually. So I think that she would be in a little groove and then just kind of being lifted up over the waves. Please comment down below. Let me know if that is your experience sailing catamarans and monoholes or whether it's just, you have no idea what I'm talking about, I'm not making any sense. See, look, okay, here's the monohole right now. This guy's putting his main sail on. He looks pretty happy. I don't think it matters what boat you're in on a day like today. It is still so beautiful to be out here. That blue, the blue of the ocean is so blue. It's gorgeous. So happens when there's really light winds and big swell. It's like the boat just rocks around and uh, there's not enough wind to fill the sails really. Kind of. So have a lot of flapping about. We've only got about um, five knots. Five knots wind speed. It's not very much. Wind me up and watch 
me choke He could build me with feathers and break me with smoke Holds me till I can't breathe And his eyes tell me things his mouth can't achieve Oh my god, this is so, so lovely I cannot tell you how lovely it is to be out in the ocean again how long has it been? It feels like forever. And you know, the sea here is so blue. It just truly feels like we're sailing the Pacific Ocean. And I just wish that, you know, we could have the opportunity to do some more kind of long distance offshore sailing on this boat. We will, not unexpectedly, we've, we've come up against the northerly winds and we're just motoring into it at the moment. This uh, swell is like, beautiful i just love these big rollers when you know the sky is blue and the winds are light absolutely stunning australian weather because I've got my... 11 degrees uh, is the apparent wind speed 11 knots and we've got apparent wind angle of 57 degrees nice so that's giving us speed to the water actually of 6.5 that's the actual, that's the speed over ground. We've got a knot of current against us. Yeah, okay. So six and a half, make you laugh. Gee, that's pretty good. Yeah, it is. So just to recap, we've got a wind angle, we're sailing at, uh, on a wind angle of what, 50? 56, 57 apparent wind. Okay, with 11 knots of wind. 11 knots of wind. Yeah. Doing, yeah, six, six knots. Six, six and a half. This is very comfortable. Mm. Yeah. Happy? I literally, yeah, I'm just looking at the figure that the sail plan made and I don't think it's a little bit of sail pin. I'm not used to these square tops. I know. You can't get much better than this, surely. <laughs> Apart from a few head strippers, yes. This is about as perfect as you get, I think. How spectacular. Rainy days don't seem so wet Stormy nights don't stay From the moment that we met You were the way Oh, this could be the best thing that I'll ever know Talk for hours and never slept Two silhouettes on the concrete steps We watched the sun as it slowly crept From the horizon to the place we met Oh, this could be the best thing that I'll ever know as far as I can see. It's, uh, I mean, pit water itself is actually the first bay that you come across which we've passed now. And I'm not sure the name of the bay that we're about to go into or right on the screen here. Um, but it's a little bit more protected and tomorrow there's some quite strong southerlies coming through again. So, you know, we want to kind of tuck ourselves in a little bit, but I cannot wait to get over to pit water the bay we just sailed past because it looks beautiful but how lovely is this i mean today has just been amazing it's been the weather has just been awesome you know we woke up in that gorgeous little bay bantry bay and uh 
here we are. We're now after an absolutely spectacular sail coming into this gorgeous inland waterway on the New South Wales coast. How spectacular. How utterly spectacular. Can't wait to spend some time exploring this entire area because it just looks so, so beautiful. And when you want me Well, I'll be gone So talk to me another time See, I don't need your recklessness Because I've got mine Did I come up to that a bit fast? Not really, no. It was, that was about right, mate. I put that in, if that was on our old boat, that would be in the top 5% of the boat. <laughs> well, we've got a nice little spot here. Yeah, this, this, this life is just too... It's, it's just, just too easy. easy. <laughs> it's it is actually too bloody easy. It is actually too easy. It's all the hard work. <laughs> hey, it's all the hard work. It used to be like sales and all this other... I know. I do actually feel like we're doing something kind we're of cheating. wrong. Yeah, I feel like we're cheating. This is quite lovely. Doesn't sound like a right pong. Left to sail the oceans wide with seas like molten glass. I should stare across the sky as tides and time do pass. Saying that I love you each and every day. Whispered on two empty nights and carry far away. So don't forget to subscribe. Join us next week as we continue to enjoy Australia while Teresa demands breakfast. <laughs> I was told there'd be bacon. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs>